everyone. Happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. Uh, it's a time where we can relax and craft for about an hour. And I work all the way through projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. You get to just sit in on crafty time with me. <laughs> and it's a nice uh, time for us to relax together and chit chat and yeah, work on a project. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be, con I'm going to be actually playing with my 19, it's actually from the 30s, it's from 1938 Kenmore sewing machine. I call it my steampunk sewing machine. Uh, you'll see in a sec why. And uh, we're going to sew some of my leaders together and I'll talk about that as well. But I'm hoping that we can sew up one of these blocks today. So this is all from recycled clothing and I'll, I'll kind of show you the process uh, and why it came to be uh, when I flip you guys around here. But thanks again for joining me. I'm gonna flip you around right now. All right, here is the sewing machine. So let me get a big angle for you again. So here it is, the, um, it is my crinkle finish 1938 Kenmore sewing machine. So I, I, I knew I had written it down somewhere, so I had it written down in the cabinet where this uh, usually lives. And it's the 1938 Kenmore, it's a model 83. And that should make it easy for me to remember what year. So it's, it was uh, the Kenmore 83 model, but it was made in 38. <laughs> so it's just the opposite of the numbers. Uh, but it is, uh, it has that drive, that uh, pulley drive, um, or the, that motor pulley. That's what the guy at the sewing machine place called it. Uh, I had written down here that it, it's a pulley drive. That's where the wheel turns the uh, larger wheel, not the belt. But yeah, so I have it out of the cabinet right here. I did figure out how to thread it. Everything's done on the side here. Uh, and I do have the tension right as well. So here, if we look, if we look closer, like look how cool. Look, I mean, I just love the shapes. Like look at these neat shapes. So um, if you guys don't know what steampunk is, uh, steampunk is kind of like a, it's a science fiction, genre but it's kind of it can be set in the future uh it's science fiction but all the there's a lot of mechanical things in it but it's all it's all like mechanical there's no like technology it's like old school technology so it'll be like goofy looking things that look kind of modern but old and mechanical uh so so i thought this machine just fits totally in uh <laughs> in that genre especially with some of these like gorgeous shapes to it. Um, so anyway, I thought we'd sew with it today. Um, I think I have it all set up, ready to go. I did change to that LED light and I'm really liking that so far. Here, I'll show you a few more things with it. So here's here's the side. This is, uh, this is, oh gosh, I forget all the anatomy of a sewing machine, but like here's where it controls the tension. It's all on the side like this and then the bobbin uh, you can take this out and the bobbin is side loaded there. Uh, and then here you have, oh, I don't know if I can get way over here, but here you have the forward and back. So it does do reverse, which is kind of cool. Uh, my singer from the twenties does not do, does not do reverse, but forward on black, <laughs> reverse on red. So right now I have it on uh, like in between two and three forward but if I want to go to reverse I can just make this cool pulley I mean look at this shape it's like this octagon shape right here too I mean everything is just neat about it but here so I can change the distance how how uh, long my stitches with the reverse too as well as the going forward so that's pretty slick I think uh, I just love it it's just so fun and I haven't gotten to use it very much yet so we're going to play with it today all right, so I wanna show you the project that I'm working on here though. So let's uh, just get kind of situated. All right, so I have been cutting up. So if you've been with me here a while, you kind of know what's going on, but I have been cutting up 
old shirts and old blankets. Uh, I mean, this is obviously from, from a shirt at some point. And I've, I divided it up into lights. So basically all this is my light colors and this, these are my kind of dark colors. And anytime I'm sewing, so this is on, on the project. So this is like the splendid sampler. Anytime I'm sewing, I will take two, I'll take a light and a dark. And when I'm done with the row of any project that I'm working on, yeah, I'm gonna get situated so you guys can see the machine a little bit better here. There we go. Anytime I finish a row, I grab two of these pieces and I put them right sides together. And let's say this is a different project that I'm working on. I will just throw it under the machine. There we go. <laughs> it makes just a crazy noise too. There we go. <laughs> it just sounds good. But anytime uh, I finish a row of stitches on any project, I'll put a leader in there. So that's just like a little piece of a little piece of fabric just so you don't have lo long strings of thread hanging around. And uh, instead of doing it with just a little piece of fabric, I've been doing it with, with these squares that I'm cutting up. So I'll sew one side and then I'll do the other. Um, so here's, here's the tension on, on this guy. It's just perfect. I kind of, it is just absolutely perfect. The tension on the sewing machine. But yeah, so I'll end up with a pile of pieces like this. I'll sew them on either side of the diagonal. So here's a bunch that I have done already. And uh, once I have a whole batch of these, then all I do is I, I take them and one at a time, I cut down the diagonal. And when you cut down the diagonal, you'll get two pieces like this. So this is the next step. So you'll get two half square triangles. So I right now have a whole stack of these half square triangles. I've already cut them in half. Um, and I need to press a few of these. Uh, what I'd like to ultimately do, uh, once they're pressed, I, I trim them down. So then we end up with a whole pile of half square triangles and I have been sewing them together. I'm gonna just flip this off for a sec. I've been sewing them together in uh, these sets of 25. So I've been getting like these neat little blocks out of it. And I actually already have three of these done and I'm gonna magically have a quilt. Uh, and I say magic because I'm not really working on this project. I'm just, it's like I said, it's just the leader. It's just whenever I'm working on another project and I finish a row, I'll stitch one of these guys. I have my basket at the ready. And then, you know, every once in a while you spend a day like this and uh, you get to work on it. So I want to put together one of these, these, uh, I'm going to go over here for a sec. I want to put together one of these 25 patches today. So here are the three that I have done. And I just think it's gonna be just so cool. It's old, old clothing. So what I wanna do is I need 25 of these squares. So I have, I think, let's see how many are here. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, we can lay them out already, I think. I'm going to, we'll kind of lay them out here. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put the, the, uh, um, dark bit on the lower left. I do need to use the iron a little bit, so I want to leave some space, but let's just, all I want to do is see how many I have. So I'm doing it where all the triangles go in the same direction. Okay, yeah, and I'm totally loving the machine. So it is kind of, it does make that kind of loud noise. I think some of that is because um, I got a new pulley drive on it, that motor pulley piece. I have a new one of those. I just bought it yesterday at the sewing machine uh, repair shop. Uh, they have a lot of vintage parts there. And he said that I should sand it down 
just because then it'll grip the wheel a little bit better and it doesn't slide. Uh, I didn't do that yet, so I, I need to sand it down, but I figured just today we'll, we'll leave it as is. So I'm being pretty random with this. I just grabbed my pile. All right, so there, there I'm running out. Okay, so I need five, six, seven, eight. So I need eight more. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab eight from my stack right here and we'll just quickly do eight and then we'll sew these together. So these are all finished. One, two, three. I just need to press them open and then trim. Four, five, six. Ooh, these ones are funny with the Hawaiian shirt. Okay, I think that's fine. So, but look, I, I can make, I could probably make two or three more of these 25 patches with what I have prepared here. Um, but I'm not gonna go through an iron and trim all that tonight. So we'll just do it with these eight that I need. Um, so I have my slotted trimmers here. I think I'm gonna use that quick uh, just cause I have them out. In theory, I should maybe use the block lock one just cause I think things might get a little stretchy here, but I'm gonna just scooch this out of the way. And I just wanna quickly trim these down. So these are ending up being uh, two and a half inch squares, I believe. Yeah, two and a half inch squares. So I'm going to put this on the two and a half inch line here. We're just gonna quickly do the, these eight because I wanna get sewing. I wanna sew this whole guy together. Okay, and I just got nervous. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the glove on. Put in that cutting glove on. I don't wanna cut my hand off. All right. Get my iron hot and ready. All right, so there's one. We're gonna press all these. I just wanna, again, just quickly get my eight. And I don't care if these are totally perfect or not, because all these fabrics are different. They're, they're from different clothes. Some are stretchier than others. Like this Hawaiian one is really kind of an oddball shirt that I use in here. It's really kind of drapey. Um, probably not the best for quilting. But yeah, so I don't care if these are totally perfect or not because if they'll stretch and move once I have them sewn in. This is not gonna be a perfect, perfect quilt by any means. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about getting this perfect. But yeah, I wanna get sewing. Let's, let's get these cut out, pressed and sewn. That's why I didn't wanna do any more than what I needed to. So just the eight. But I think I'm gonna leave this machine out for a while. We'll, we'll use this machine um, for a bit. So tonight we'll work on, we'll just do, we'll play around with these um, 25 patch blocks. Um, but I think we can do a splendid sampler block on this and I think we should try. I'll have to mark my quarter inch seam allowance cause I'm sure I don't have that perfect on here, especially since I like haven't used this machine really ever. So we can try measuring that. Oops. And uh, get a block made. A little piece to block, that'd be fun. Yep, the triangles are out, Jennifer. I thought we'd, uh, we'd I wanna play with the, the new old sewing machine. I got my Kenmore, it's a Kenmore 1938 machine. It is a Model 83 from 1938. So I was saying yesterday that it was from the 40s. It's not, it is from the 1938, late, late 30s. Which is even more exciting. <laughs> All right, last one that we can press quickly and then get sewing. Ooh, that does the job, that little um, trimmer. So remember, this is that, this is that perfectly, or that clearly perfect slotted trimmers. This one right here 
is the one that was busted, but look, it is totally mended. Isn't that crazy? So that was, we did that the other, um, like a week or so ago. You can kind of see where, where it broke right from here to here. And we uh, fixed it. Oh, there you can kind of tell in the glare. We fixed it with just acrylic glue for nail polish, like acrylic nail polish glue. And I'm telling you, it is like brand new. <laughs> it is kind of magical. Um, I haven't made any triangles this size yet, so I haven't used it, but crazy town. I'm just really impressed with uh, how well that nail polish glue worked. All right, let's shimmy these guys to the side. All right, let's quickly press these and uh, uh, we will we'll get, get sewing here. All right, I'm guessing I pressed to the dark side, yeah. Okay. So I'm putting the dark side up. There, see what I mean? Like they stretch differently, so these aren't gonna be perfectly two and a half inch squares. Um, we'll just We'll just deal with that. When we sew it together, it'll be fine. That's why it might have been better to sew it with the block lock, or I mean, um, cut it with the block lock ruler instead, because then I would have pressed it open first before, before trimming it. Then I wouldn't have any weird curved edges. But um, that clearly perfect slotted trimmers, because you only make half the amount of cuts, it goes much faster. So I went with that. Look at these fun Hawaiian shirt ones though. They're so, so silly. Ooh, that one's pretty. Bright pink on there. Let's do more of those. Oh, this is gonna be a cool block with this, these Hawaiian uh, shirts and I'm really excited about this quilt. Like I said, it, to me it's, the magic quilt because, oh here, I'm gonna put one of these up here and then this bright pink one can go down here. Because it, oop, it's, again, it's just, first of all, it's old shirts and blankets, so the fabric came from nowhere, right? And then secondly, I am not even taking time to work on it, except for like little bouts like this. All of this got sewn from uh, um, just being at the end of any ro every row that I sew on any project, uh, throwing one of these half square triangles on the end there. All right, so here is going to be our block. I don't know if you guys can see, but there we are. I think it is pretty dang cute. Um, so I'm going to use I think I'm gonna do that webbing style. So I'm actually gonna sew a column together. So I'm gonna sew these two, then these two, then these two, then these two, then these two, and then I'm not going to snip them apart. I'm gonna leave them together, and then I'll keep sewing another row onto it. Same thing. I might actually sew this column and then this column Let's see, I could sew this column. I'm trying to think of the best way to, to not um, take it off the machine. So I think I'm gonna sew the first column, then the last column, and then I'll sew this to this row, and then this to this, I don't know. I think we'll give that a try. So <laughs> I think it'll make sense when I get, once I get going. All right, let's get to the machine, and I'll stay kind of far back like this again so you guys can, can see the machine and what we're doing here today. Hopefully I don't get totally in the way here. All right. Don't need this, don't need this. We're gonna actually scooch this closer, I think, because why not? All right, and I'm gonna grab uh, from this top row. All right, so right sides together. I'm gonna get my a little stiletto in here too. And you know what, I'm gonna just readjust. I'm not close enough to see, so let's, let's get up like this. Hey, 
<laughs> it's just, it makes such a funny sound that I'm not used to. <laughs> All right, next column. All right, I can see your comments now, you guys. Uh, so two and a half inch, oh yes, yes, yes. So yep, these are two and a half inch squares. I've cut them down to two and a half inch squares. Oh wow, that just, that just ramped up. <laughs> I got a little, I'm getting used to the foot pedal yet. This is kind of my first real time sewing on this actually. It's just been sitting in the cabinet since I got it. That was like a year ago. So this is, this is great to get it out. Yeah, it doesn't just stop. It kind of slows down just a hair. It's working though. It, it's sewing. So that makes me happy. That means I threaded it correctly. <laughs> so that's a bonus. Yeah, I think I started with three inch squares. Let's just measure quick. Um, let's see. Yeah, about... They're about three inch squares. Uh, and then I, like I said, I just cut a ton. I just have a, a light pile and a dark pile. And uh, yeah, they're ending up to be two and a half inches once I trim them down after sewing them together. And I'm doing them just super quick to Like they're not perfectly cut. They're not perfect anything. Okay, now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the, the last column here. <laughs> this will be interesting, we'll see how well this works, but I'm gonna take this last column. I think this is gonna make it go quickly, but we'll see. Okay, and I'm actually gonna snip this last one off. All right, so if this is the top, then this is our first column. So I'm gonna just put my the first column there. Now I'm doing the third column. <laughs> this is probably not the best way of doing this, but I did it in a way where I don't have to take it off the machine at all. I can just keep chain piecing. That was, that was the thought at least. Uh-oh. Ooh, see, I think that's what I need to rough up the, uh, there we go. Oh no, it's just spinning. Okay. There we go again. So the, um, sewing machine guy, like I said a little earlier, he said I should, I should get some sandpaper and, uh, um, just make the wheel that's spinning this whole thing, just make it rougher. And I think that's what was happening just then. I was pressing the pedal and it wasn't, it wasn't going because it couldn't get any grip onto the big wheel, if that makes sense. I can show you, show you that side of the machine. Yeah, it, it has a really mechanical sound, doesn't it, Arloa? It, it, it is just like a motor running. And you know, last time we tested it, it did have kind of that motor smell, but it's probably just because it hadn't been used in ages and ages. I'm not smelling that tonight, so I wonder if we burnt it all off last time. Yeah, like it's, it's just wanting to spin. There it goes. Nope. I'm just trying to help it get it started. Huh. I'm not sure. It's just not catching, it feels like. Well. I 
I think, ooh, I might just need it to tighten it. Let's see, do I have a screwdriver? Oh, I moved my screwdriver. I wonder if this just needs to be tightened a little bit. All right, well, we'll just see if we can keep it going. All right, I'm gonna start this next row. I'm gonna take the first row and put it on this one. Remember the hand wheel turns away from you, not like a singer. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I'll have to, there's a lot to learn, that's for sure. Come on, guy. Now it's not gripping at all. Let's see. Might have to hand crank this. Oh, I think I see what the problem is. All right, you guys, I will show you the motor pulley here, but I need to go grab a screwdriver quick. Oh yeah, it's the adjustment to tighten up the contact wheel. No, lean, that's exactly it. So hold on a sec, you guys. All right, I totally, Nolene, that's exactly what's happening. So here, let's go to the back. It's kind of neat to see from the back too. So, all right, here's the back. This right here is that motor pulley. And what's happening is it's not tight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, un well, yeah, I'm gonna unplug it while we do this. Uh, but this just isn't tight on. And all I have to do, I think, is, um, Oh yeah, look, look, it just came right off. So this is new. Um, so, you know, I don't know, maybe I just have to keep tightening it until it gets used to it. So there is, there is a little screw here. And uh, I think, you know, I think that's it. I think we're, we're tight again. So I'm gonna just leave this back here and uh, we should be good to go again. But yeah, so here's what I mean though. Isn't this neat? So here's the motor. And it spins, all it does, the motor spins this wheel, and that wheel is the sewing machine wheel. So there's no belt, no nothing. Um, so that is, that is it. Isn't that interesting? It's just different than a, a sewing machine with a belt. It has that uh, motor pulley instead. All right, let's get to the front again. Such a neat shape, though. All right, I... I suspect it will, it'll work just fine now. Here, let's get a little further back. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little roller coastery today. Okay. Now I think it probably will work again. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. That was for sure the problem. That screw just came loose. Man, so I wonder how often that will happen. We'll have to see, see how that goes. Isn't it, uh, Robin? I, I mean, like when we, so I got this machine. Minneapolis does a huge sewing donation and then rummage sale. I think, I think the textile center here puts it on. And I think they do it once or twice a year. Let's gonna, I'm gonna snip that last column off. Um, but they, so like they have a week where you can, uh, uh, where you can donate stuff and then a week or uh, like a day or two where they have a huge rummage sale. And so they have a whole middle area where it's just these old vintage sewing machines. And oh man, I could have gotten at least three or four machine, more machines than I did. They were so cool. There was really old singers that had the shuttle for the bobbin. So they didn't even have a bobbin. They had like this little shuttle. And that's actually what the logo is. If you ever see the old singer logo, it kind of looks like a, an ear of corn. It's actually the shuttle. Um... But anyway, they had one of those and that would have been just cool just because it's just so interesting that shuttle moving back and forth instead of a bobbin. Uh, and they had just a lot of 
uh, just treadle machines and but this one was so cool and it it came in a box someone had made or they had painted over the the box that it comes in like with the the carrying case the handle and everything um it was a, and it, they had handwritten like cursive like barbara brought and then um like a high school graduation present or something but it had uh, the year and uh, who it was for, all hand-painted. And we almost, my husband and I, we would have gotten it just for that box. That box, that handwritten old box was so cool. And then this machine was in it, and we we're like, oh my god, that is the coolest machine ever. Uh, so we got it from, from that sale. All right, now i got to use a leader. And... Um, then I wanted a cabinet for it, but I didn't want a huge honking cabinet. I wanted one of those smaller cabinets that just look like an end table that, you know, have an open bottom and stuff. And we found one that had a Kenmore in, um, and it had a Kenmore from the 1960s. And I'm like, oh, that's the perfect cabinet for this one. So, but they wouldn't let me buy just the, the cabinet that the 1960s Kenmore was in. I had to buy the whole thing. And so for $10, I got the cabinet with the 1960s Kenmore on the inside. So I have that machine too. And I haven't, I haven't used that ever yet. Um, they said it didn't work or it had some trouble. So I think it'd be fun to try and open that up and trying to figure it out. But yeah, so now I have this guy in the coolest uh, small cabinet and I just love it so much. All right, this is our first column. We just have to sew it to the second column. It's looking a little crazy here, but it will all come together and then we'll st stitch the rows up. Oh, we, we have to press it though first. So this is kind of a goofy way of doing it, but it does this webbing style of sewing. It does make things go fast. Getting rows together. Although I did it in a goofy way where it's just kind of confusing. I didn't go row by row. You love using old machines. I do too. I just feel like it's like rescuing history a little bit, you know? Like this poor machine would have just been tossed in the trash or something, you know? All right, I'm glad we figured out that pulley, um, that pulley drive situation. It, it literally was, it just came loose. It's a new one and maybe that'll happen all the time, who knows? Or maybe I just didn't tighten it enough the first time. Oh, Mark, I would love to get a treadle sewing machine. So the Singer, I think it's from 1927. Oh, I forget. It's from the 1920s, I know. That that came from my husband's uh, great-grandmother. That one was a converted uh, treadle. So it already had a motor when I had it. So what was popular... People would have their treadle sewing machines, but then when when motors came out, or you know electricity with it, uh, a lot of people converted their they kept their treadle sewing machine, but they converted it to a motor. So they put a motor onto the machine, the same machine that they used as the treadle. They they got rid of the treadle stuff and put a motor on it, and um, then they got to use the same machine just with a motor. So that's that's what I have now, his great grandmother's machine. So it's a converted treadle. It used to be a treadle, but now it has a motor. But I would love to get one that has a treadle on yet, but I can't do that until I have like some serious space. Cause right now I do not have the space for a, a treadle sewing machine. Although it would be just so cool. Uh, if you guys don't know, a treadle sewing machine, those are those sewing machines that have that pedal where you have to keep pushing the, it's mechanicals, or it doesn't have electricity, so you keep pushing the pedal at the right pace, and then that's what makes the needle go. So you gotta keep, keep working on that pedal. All 
All right, I need another leader in here to finish this row. So let's get um, our light and dark pieces of fabric. I think I have two pieces here. Nope, just one. And we'll finish this row up. There, I just always have these squares available now and and occasionally I need to just cut them down and then I start sewing them to this. Soon I'll have a whole quilt, I think. <laughs> it sounds like a motorcycle. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's uh, press this. Oh, you have your Nan's treadle with, oh, buttons and threads still in it. Oh, from the early 1900s. That... That's amazing, and that sounds right. That that would be um, when they were doing it, like the 1900s, and mine was a 1920s, and uh, it probably got converted probably in the 40s, if I had to guess. All right, so that worked. Here are the rows all sewn together, and they've we've kept them together. So now we just have to sew um, sew the rows together. But first I need to press. So I'm going to press in different directions because then we can nest, nest the seams together. So I'm going to just flip this whole thing around and we will attempt to press these seams in different directions. All right. This will be interesting though. <laughs> it's so stretchy, some of this, this fabric. All right, that one's going that direction. <laughs> this is the one thing about this webbing style that gets a little bit weird is pressing these rows. I mean, a lot of people, when they do this webbing, they're not doing as small as pieces like this. They're doing like a whole quilt. Um, so maybe pressing isn't such a big deal, like your row from before isn't so close on top of you, um, but oh well, we're going to get it working. The trick is we want each row, the seam allowances to be pointing in different directions because then we can nest the seams together. And what that does is give us really nice points where all the points meet from row to row. Okay, I'm gonna press this bottom one in that direction because it's easy. For some reason that one's easier. Okay, and then, then one more row here going that way. There's got to be a better way to do this, but oh well. Just kind of grabbing on the row underneath. All right, well, that'll do. So uh, I have all the seam allowances going in opposite directions. So now I should be able to flip this around and put two rows together. And I should be able to feel like where, where the seam allowance is going one way and the one's going the other. I should be able to just feel where those match up. I'm not gonna use clips or pins or anything just cause I don't really care how good this turns out. Um, so I think, I think I'm just gonna go down the rows, just start sewing. Oh, a cordless, yeah, a cordless mini iron. I have not found a mini iron that I'm, that I'm happy with yet. So I don't know. I don't know about the mini iron. All right, let's, you know what? I'm gonna get close this time so you guys can see here. Maybe I'll turn this way, then you can see like the cool, 
this cool uh the loose and tight <laughs> i just just all of it i just love all of it all right this is our first row so i think those seams are nested together good enough this might just be a disaster how i'm doing this maybe i should have pinned but oh well we're gonna attempt without pinning all right i'm in that first bit now let's get these second seams together Definitely sounds different than the old machine, doesn't it? The other, oh, the other old machine. <laughs> this one's uh, 40 years younger than the other machine. Isn't that crazy to think about? We need to get another leader here. Get my my box of leaders. I gotta put these guys somewhere. They they're ready to iron. I should just have these out in a stack. So whenever I'm ironing, I should just iron a few more open kind of in the way in my basket. A light and a dark. Do I always use uh, so, uh, older sewing machines? I mean, I do, but not for any other reason other than that's what I have. <laughs> I mean, if I had a super mega new fancy machine, I'm sure I'd have a lot of fun working on that. Um, I do, I do like the idea of um, that you don't need a fancy new machine to work on. So I do like that idea. Oh, look, see, that's a good, that's a perfect point right there. I'm happy with that. Not too bad. Yeah, that first one's not great, but. Dang, these other ones are not too shabby. I'm happy enough with those. So let's oop, snip off our leader from the row before. I think we'll definitely get this done today. That's exciting. Fold these guys over. Get those first seam allowances locked together. But yeah, so I do like the old sewing machines just because I feel like I'm rescuing them. It makes me sad <laughs> that there's all those just cool old vintage machines out there. Uh, so I do get a little thrill out of using them. And uh, you know, now I'm learning more about how to how to clean them and restore them a little bit. So so I do like that. However, I know all those new machines have nice, fancy stuff going on with it. I mean, it'd be fun to play around with um, more like machine embroidery and, and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, these are like old sewing machines you can find on, um, uh, you know, your on Facebook Marketplace or whatever for like 20 bucks. and. Sometimes in your neighborhood or sometimes for free. So I mean if you like old machines and you can um, Troubleshoot them and fix them up Then uh, you know, they're pretty fun All right that rose done. Let's get our leader in here again <laughs> Oh, it's fun it's just a, a new sound for me. 
Oh, you were your father-in-law's and another from a friend. Featherweights. Yeah, man, featherweights seem to be a huge popular collecting thing. And I think it's just because they're adorable. Um, I've not, I'm not even sure I've actually seen one in real life. I've seen them online though. And they're just, they're just like so small, but you know, still a full powered sewing machine from what it sounds like. So people can use them to travel and, you know, have them up on a shelf and just take them down when you don't want to use them. Oh, I'm stuck on the edge here. There we go. I mean, I have a bunch of Kenmores now and it and it's not like I'm I mean, that's kind of on accident. So like my machine that I usually sew on, that's from the 70s. It's a 70s Kenmore. And that was my mom's machine in college. So I just acquired that one. Or I'm long-term borrowing it. How about that? <laughs> uh, I have long-term borrowed my mom's uh, college sewing machine. And... Uh, that's a Kenmore. This just happens to be a Kenmore. This the steampunk one, this um, Model 83. Um, I, it was just so cool, and so I wanted it. And it happens to be a Kenmore. And then the, the, the one, the machine that was in the cabinet that I wanted for this, so I got a mach another machine out of it, that happens to be a Kenmore as well. So I have inadvertently started collecting... Kenmore, vintage Kenmore sewing machines. So I have one, this one's from the 30s, and then I have the one from the 60s, and then the one from the 70s. So I just think that's kind of funny. So I don't know, maybe. And now I, I joined a vintage Kenmore Facebook group. So maybe for real, I'm a Kenmore collector now. I don't know. <laughs> On accident. All right, I think I have one more row to do here. Uh, my mom has a Bernina. At this point, it's it's a little older. I mean, it's got to be from, let's see, it's probably about 15 years old now or so. So, I don't know, maybe in early 2000s, um, Bernina, which was new and fancy uh, when it when she got it. I mean, they're beyond fancy now, all those all those new machines, but she she did get an, hers new. But like I said, that was like maybe 15 years ago or so. So was this one something that someone would have had in their home? Oh yeah, this would have been a home a home sewing machine for sure. This wouldn't have been an industrial one at all. So for sure this was a home one. And like I said, uh, I think it was we got the box. It was it came in a hand painted box. And uh, um, for Barbara Brot, <laughs> I just love it. It has her name painted on it. And uh, we suspect it was a high school gift. So like, a, you know, you're, you're out of high school, you better start homemaking sort of gift. <laughs> so, uh, so we suspect it was that. So definitely meant for home use, not, um, not a professional tailor or anything like that. Although they might have used uh, a similar one. I don't know. It's not an industrial sewing machine. It's, it's, it's a home sewing machine. All right. Oh, I need one more leader, but that is, that is it for, um, for this 25 patch. Uh, let's, I'll just have to press it. See, see how we magically make more of these so quickly, you know, after every row, any row that I'm sewing, I just throw another square, a couple squares in here, and then all of a sudden, we have a pile of these half square triangles. It's kind of magic. Like even today, we we um, made at least. Oops, we made 
you know, two or three of these and each one of these you get two half square triangles out. So, I mean, we're just totally cranking them out. It's just magic. All right, so let's, uh, let's say bye to the machine for a moment here. And, oh gosh, I can touch this so that it's warm, but that LED light um, is really working. I showed you that LED light yesterday. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to touch this if I had the other light in. No way, I would have, I would have burnt, burnt my fingers off for sure. And like, look, I have all these triangles ready to, to cut to make into more of these guys. <laughs> it's cute. All right, let's press to one direction. I suspect I might have um, did a little too big a seam allowance, but maybe maybe it'll stretch a little once I press it. We'll see what it looks like next to the other one. So now I have four of these blocks together. I I'm just um, expecting, I'll probably make a whole quilt just these half square triangles so it won't look like blocks of 25 later. Um, I'm just, uh, blocks of 25 like this just seemed manageable. Um, you know, and then I can sew just all the rows of these 25s together later is what I figure. I am just kind of just stretching this a little bit to make it a little bit more square. All right, let's flip it around and give it another little press. <laughs> it's cute though. Oh, look at these little Hawaiian shirts in there. Oh, I just think it's gonna be a sweet quilt when it's finished. And again, it's a magic quilt. It's from nothing. This is These are old clothes that I've saved under the assumption that someday I'll do something with them. <laughs> They're just in a bin in my basement. Um, it's not taking up any time because you know, I'm just sewing these these leaders at the end of everything else that I'm sewing. And then just taking little moments like today to, to make it a block of uh, 25. So let's, I just, I'm going to get a lot higher here. I want to see what the four, the four that I have done now look like. So I have this guy. Oh, let's put, let's put them together. Let's switch this out of the way. Oh, the cord's kind of in the way, but... Let's put it in like a group of four, so it's like a mini quilt. Oh, I love it. That's, so that's, look, it's kind of, it hurts your eyes a little bit, doesn't it? But yeah, I just think it's kind of fun. Um, oh, I could, so I really could. So Noli, maybe we'll do that tomorrow. So I have that adjustable um, extension table. I could adjust it special for this machine and we could just use this machine for a little while. I, I like that idea. Uh, maybe we do that tomorrow. But there we go. We could um, could angle them differently. So like what if all the darks are pointed towards the inside? I don't think I'll do this. I think I'll end up um, just having them all go in the same direction. But you know, there there is opportunity. Oh gosh, see, look how much that changed it. We got this kind of vibrating uh, squares. Oh man, maybe I like that. <laughs> oh, I wanted to just them to go all in the same direction, but that looks kind of cool this way, doesn't it? Oh, I kind of like that. Oh, I might have been ending up being being like this. <laughs> all right, you guys. But we got another one done. And like I said, look at all these triangles. I mean, these all have to be pressed and trimmed, but we got enough here for sure for probably at least two more. So awesome. Oh, Nolene, I've not, uh, I've named it the steampunk machine. I, I haven't named it anything other than that. Yeah, didn't that really change it? Oh, that's what's so fun about half square triangles. They really, you really can do a lot. Man, it's like super vibrating. I love it. All right, you guys, I'm going to flip you around and we'll call it an evening here. Hello. So I had so much fun. Uh, working on that machine today. I think we'll definitely leave this one out for a while. Like I said, my other machines in the shop, um, I haven't used this one at all yet. So it's nice to uh, get to know a new machine, get to, uh, you know, I don't, I don't even remember if I oiled it or anything. So we'll use it for a little while and uh, see if I can learn about it. We already learned something today. I had to tighten that, that, uh, that wheel up again, but pretty fun. I love it so far. Yeah, I and you know what I did like rotating those blocks a little bit. So I don't know, maybe 
you guys, maybe for the rest of the week, maybe let's just work on uh, on these um, these leaders a little bit more. I mean, it's kind of overflowing in that little basket. I'd like to get rid of more of these triangles. So I think let's just continue this. There's only a couple more days left in the week. Uh, and it'd be nice to just get a little farther. So yeah, so tomorrow we will press a whole pile more, at least um, let's see how many we can do, how many we can press tomorrow. If we can get two more of these guys worth of these um, blocks of 25, that'd be pretty nice. Uh, do two more of those up. And then yeah, then use this machine some more. <laughs> so awesome, you guys. Thank you again for joining me here and playing around uh, with me in the evenings. Uh, here. Uh, and I will get this up on YouTube if you want to check out the machine a little bit more, or if you want to prep a bunch of leaders uh, to have a basket near you to grab and make one of these magic quilts with me. <laughs> it's kind of kind of fun. Uh, so, all right. And I will see you guys tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central, 9.30 Eastern, and 6.30 Pacific uh, here on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page. So thanks again. Have a great evening, guys. Good night.